Okay, so today we'll talk about uh, the cranial fossae. And to begin, uh, let's mention names of the 12 cranial nerves. Um, in order, we've got uh, olfactory, optic, oculomotor, trochlear, trigeminal, abducent, facial, vestibulocochlear, uh, glossopharyngeal, vagus, accessory, and finally hypoglossal nerves. Now talking about the anterior cranial fossa, uh, it's bounded anteriorly by the frontal bone, posteriorly by lesser rings of the sphenoid, and the floor is formed by the rigid orbital plates uh, of the frontal bone and also the cribriform plates of the ethmoid. Uh, the anterior cranial fossa uh, carries the frontal lobe of the cerebrum. In the anterior cranial fossa, uh, we've got the ethmoid bone. Uh, this is this projection is the cristagalli of the ethmoid uh, and these are the cribriform plates uh, this is the frontal crest of the frontal bone uh, the frontal crest and also the cristagalli provide attachment for the folk cerebri the folk cerebri um, is formed by the dura mater which is part of the meninges that covers the brain um, the dura mater uh, superiorly forms the superior sagittal sinus um, this is the foramen cecum for passage of the emissary veins. In the cribriform plates, we've got the cribriform foramina. Uh, they are hard to see here, uh, but they uh, provide passage for the olfactory nerves, which are the cranial nerves 1. Uh, and the uh, cribriform plates um, provide a support uh, for the uh, olfactory bulbs, uh, which give origin to the olfactory nerves. Uh, somewhere here, uh, we've got the posterior ethmoidal uh, foramen for passage of the posterior ethmoidal nerves and vessels. Uh, and somewhere here, uh, we've got the anterior ethmoidal uh, foramen and also a nasal slit, uh, which provide passage for the anterior ethmoidal nerves and vessels. This is the uh, body of the sphenoid. Uh, in the body, we've got jugum. It's also called uh, jugum sphenoidalis. Uh, in this part of the sphenoid, uh, we've got two sphenoidal air sinuses. Uh, the air sinuses generally give a lighter weight to the bone because they are empty in that region. Uh, and they're also useful for voice uh, resonance, uh, but they are lined with mucosa. So uh, when um, it faces inflammation, uh, there will be increase in discharge of those uh, mucous membranes. Um, these uh, projections on the medial side of the lesser wings of the sphenoid are called anterior clinoid processes. Uh, along with the posterior clinoid processes, uh, they provide attachment for the tentorium cerebelli. Talking about the middle cranial fossae, um, they are bounded anteriorly by the lesser wings uh, of the sphenoid and posteriorly by petrous parts of the temporal bones. Uh, they carry the temporal lobes of the cerebrum. Talking about openings or foramina uh, in the middle cranial fossa, uh, this is the optic canal. Uh, okay, that's the optic canal. Uh, for passage of the uh, optic nerve, which is the second cranial nerve, um, the ophthalmic artery, uh, and also uh, central vessels of the retina. Uh, next, we've got the superior orbital fissure. This is it. This is the superior orbital fissure. Um, this is the foramen rotundum. Foramen rotundum uh, for passage of the uh, maxillary division of trigeminal nerve. Uh, and then this is foramen ovale and uh, spinosum, of course. And then uh, the most uh, medial foramen is foramen lacerum. This is foramen lacerum um, for passage of emissary veins. And then this is the carotid canal. Carotid canal for passage of the internal carotid artery. Uh, so let's talk about a uh, course of the internal carotid artery. It will come like that. Uh, here again, uh, this is the uh, carotid canal. So 
the internal carotid artery will pass through this canal and this canal it has got two openings outer opening and inner opening the inner opening is here okay so the uh, internal carotid artery will come like that and it will pass over the foramen lacerum okay so it will not pass through the foramen lacerum but over uh, the foramen lacerum uh, from the internal side and then uh, it will pass th through this groove which is called the carotid groove the carotid groove Uh, this is the sulcus chiasmaticus or chiasmatic groove. Netter actually calls it pre chiasmatic groove, but uh, no big deal. Uh, this is um, uh, sulcus chiasmaticus, which is related to the uh, optic chiasma. Um, this is the tuberculum cilae, this ridge over here. Tuberculum cilae. Uh, this is hypophysial fossa uh, for hypophysis or pituitary fossa for pituitary gland. Uh, this is dorsum cilae. Dorsum cilae. Uh, these are the posterior clonic processes. Uh, these four uh, landmarks tuberculum cilae, hypophysial fossa, dorsum cilae, and, uh, and the posterior clonic processes form the cella turcica or cella turcica, which is part of the body of the sphenoid. In the middle cranial fossa, uh, this is greater ring of the sphenoid. Uh, this is sequimus part uh, of the temporal bone. This is its petrous part, and this is the uh, parietal bone. Um, these are uh, impressions for middle meningeal vessels. Uh, as we said, the middle meningeal artery passes through through the uh, foramen spinosum, so it's quite clear to identify that. Uh, this is the anterior uh, branch and posterior branch of the middle meningeal vessels. Uh, the anterior branch uh, passing beneath the tyrion. See, this is the uh, location of the tyrion from the inside. This is the posterior cranial fossa, uh, bounded anteriorly uh, by petrous part uh, of the temporal bones, posteriorly by sequimus part of the occipital, and also a small part of the parietal bones. As we said earlier, uh, this is the dorsum cilae, and this is basilar part of the occipital bone, but together they form the clivus. So if there's a spot on any area uh, in this region, uh, we'd say that this is the clivus. Uh, this is uh, related to the pons and uh, basilar arteries. But if there's a spot in here, we'd say that this is basilar part of the occipital bone, and of course this was the um, pharyngeal tubercle. About openings in the posterior cranial fossa, uh, this is the most uh, obvious opening, foramen magnum. Uh, these are the condylar, uh, the condylar canals. Uh, these are uh, hypoglossal canals. Hypoglossal canals. Um, these these are internal acoustic meatuses. Okay, internal acoustic meatus for passage of the facial nerve and vestibular cochlear nerve. And uh, here, uh, this is the jugular foramen. It's a large, irregular shaped foramen, jugular foramen, uh, between the petrous part of the temporal and also the occipital bone. Uh, this is the internal um, occipital protuberance, which is related to the confluence of sinuses. Uh, this is um, internal uh, occipital crest. Um, uh, for attachment of the Falks cerebelli. Um, this is um, impression or groove uh, for the sigmoid sinus. Uh, this is groove uh, for inferior petrosal sinus. So uh, it's quite clear to see that these two sinuses pass through the jugular foramen. And here, uh, this is a groove or impression for the superior petrosal sinus. Uh, this is groove for the transverse sinus. In the vault of the skull, uh, this is groove for the superior sagittal sinus. This is a mastoid foramen. Mastoid foramen. And here, 
uh, this is mastoid so uh, this would be the mastoid angle okay mastoid angle in the petrous part of the temporal bone uh, this is called the trigeminal impression and this is the arcuate eminence